Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Yakety Yak with James and Zach. I'm Zach. And I'm James. Hello. Uh, in our last video uh, of Yakety Yak, we talked about all the stuff that's rotating out of Modern come June 1st of this year and all the things that we were going to miss, like World's Finest. Um, mm. But uh, in this video, we thought we'd try talking about uh, the stuff that we're looking forward to being a big uh, part of modern uh, and what we think might be impactful. And because there's still quite a lot left, uh, we thought we'd break it down by set. So we're going to start off with the Batman set today and talk about all the things that we think are going to be um, big, important pieces from the Batman set. And first off the bat, we've got Ace the Bat Hound. Uh, he's a sleeper hit. Um, he's a, with his two cost common, he's an ally. Um, and maybe more importantly, the uncommon. If your opponent has any villains in the field, he gets plus two attack. I just like him. I don't know if he's going to be massively meta, but for two and a total fielding cost of one, you've got something in the uncommon version which has an attack of four or five. And he's a handy ally in his common version. So I reckon I quite like. I'm not keen on dogs, but Bat Dog is all right by me. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to give some credit to uh, Phil on the Discord for reminding me about this card. But the next one we're going to talk about is the Common Batarang, uh, a two cost bolt action. Um, it has uh, the ability where you deal three damage to target villain character die. Um, you know, fans of the old cold gun are going to remember that three damage was more than sufficient to take care of a lot of control villains like Shriek and Scarlet Witch. Of course, viewing it with an action for Scarlet Witch is a bit tough, but if it rolls, then that's pretty good for you. Um, a lot of villain control knocking around these days. Um, it was pretty popular in the um, against Yanti, and so there's no reason to think that people won't continue playing it because it's still it's still pretty good. Um, and then it also has the ability to do boomerang, which means you can use it, deal three damage to a villain, and then you get a 50-50 chance that you just get to do it again next turn. So um, I don't think boomerang ever saw a ton of play, and I think this is might be the only card that has boomerang by default. Uh, but uh, it seems like a pretty good way to do removal, especially in a villain heavy meta. Seems pretty good to me. I'm not sure I'd personally ever get it to roll or boomerang. But, <laughs> uh, next up, um, Batgirl, Shadow of the Bat. Um, uh, Zach already talked about villain teams, and there's probably going to be a lot of villain hate. And I can imagine, well, Nobby did quite well uh, against Yanti. So if that persists in the meta, um, villain control could be quite strong, which means people will play against it also, which means they might be using people like Madam Mask to stop the when fielded abilities of people like Nobby, Shriek, and Blob. How do we get around that? Um, pretty tricky, because you can't Shriek it if they're stopping your Shrieking ability. So what we could use is Intimidate, um, because that was ruled not to be a when fielded ability, or when attacked, depending. Um, so maybe if we can get Collector out in the field, we can pay a fist and swing a quick Batgirl in, intimidate mask off the field and then feel the shriek to blank mask and then mask can gladly come back next turn and she'll be blanked and you can carry on about your business of nobbying people so it could be useful yeah intimidate one of those keywords that uh there's only a couple of them left in modern because civil war went out but also it doesn't get used very much and people tend to forget what it does so maybe you can get a little bit of an advantage that way all right uh next up we're gonna talk about the rare batman Rare Batman made a big splash, I think, when Batman first came out and everybody was talking about him. And at least a few people were playing him on their world's teams last year. Um, and he's got a pretty good ability. He's a flip card, uh, so he's got two sides. On one side, he's a bat character. And when fielded, your opponent has to re-roll all their active villain character dice. And then on the other side, he's a villain. And when fielded, your opponent has to re-roll all their active non-villain character dice. Um, I mean the the timing on this is awesome you field him your opponent re-rolls dice anything that comes up as energy is going to stay in their reserve pool which means they could use it for globals when you pass priority but then at the end of their turn it's just going to go to use so not only is it a great removal but it's not even KOing them and so they don't get to re-roll them again next turn um it does have, it does have a couple of downsides though because it's countered by the same things as madam mask that uh, the same things that madam mask blocks like the when fielded stuff it also also snares up batman um mm -hmm. and it's got a bit of a high fielding cost and we could maybe help that out with commissioner gordon his friend who while active your non-villain dice cost two less to field so if batman's on that side you could um, make his fielding much more friendly he does cost four but he's an ally and we like allies 
<laughs> that Commissioner Gordon, there's a lot of good non villains that have decent fielding costs on them. But if you take those away, um, I've used him on Turtles teams, all kinds of stuff. Um, he also counts things like dragons, which are not villains. Um, and so being able to remove fielding costs is pretty good. Um, all right, uh, back to the bees. We're going to talk about the uncommon Batwoman, um, also a flip card. Um, I use this in a draft, um, and it worked pretty well for me. But um, basically, on one side, she has common ground, uh, which was a really weird keyword from the Batman set, but uh, still around. Um, Batwoman can't be blocked if she attacks with at least one villain character deck. Well, if you're playing any kind of control whatsoever, you're probably going to have at least one villain on your team these days, um, <laughs> even if it's just Shriek. Uh, and then you get an unblockable Batwoman. Of course, you'd have to attack with Shriek. Uh, and then on the other side, Batwoman can't be blocked by non-villain dice unless the defending player pays one. So a little bit trickier on the back, but um, you could find yourself in situations where either side means that she's effectively unblockable, or on her villain side, that means your opponent's going to have to save energy every turn just to block her, and that means you're taken away from their economy. Um, in, in modern now, there's only Kate Bishop Global. There's no more super rare Ronin. Um, there's, a, there's many fewer ways to deal with unblockable characters than there used to be. Um, Kate Bishop Global is still pretty effective, but there are a couple ways that can be shrieked these days, uh, a couple other ways to deal with it. So I think unblockable might be a pretty decent win con now. Splinter's teachings might help you out if you're facing unblockable, because you can swap their attack for one of your psychics if you yeah, get one. Yeah, that is true. And yeah. that can't be shrieked, but still, it's yeah, tricky, powerful mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah. she, might, she might see some action where she never did before. Um, what was the next one? Was it the promo? Probably yes, Catwoman, I think. Um, yeah, it could could be interesting. She's um, she's when fielded, your opponent loses one life, uh, and on the other side, aftershock, um, your opponent loses one life. It's always nice to see a bit of losing life because there's not much can be done to mitigate it, unlike uh, damage. Um, she's a little bit like the Stinger from is it Amazing Spider-Man that's that's leaving mm -hmm. Black Widow. Um, she does cost a bit more. She's three instead of two, and she's not so easily knocked out. So aftershock is not quite as easy to trigger because she's got a higher defense line, I think. Uh, but still, could be interesting for a bit of life loss. Who's next? Yeah. Um, all right. All so right. going down to the, the former golden boy of this set, the super rare dark side force of entropy. Uh, man, this card was highly sought after uh, when Batman first came out. Uh, I know it was going for some pretty high prices. Um, it definitely made it onto a couple of world teams. I believe it won the U.S. Nationals last year on a bolt ranked team. Um, and then, man, I don't think I saw anybody talking about it for the last few months in the meta. Um, I think the meta sped up quite considerably, um, maybe with it slowed down a bit. Um, um, so if you ha have forgotten what Super Dark Side does, uh, while well, Dark Side is active, your sidekicks gain swarm. So if you have any sidekicks on the field while he's out, it means you basically your whole bag most of the time. That means every time you draw a sidekick, it doesn't count towards your four. Um, this was uh, pretty insane for ramp uh, once he was in the field and, and unblanked, but it also meant things like uh, if your guy Gardner went through unblocked, then you basically just drew him again next turn. Um, is uh, a pretty effective way to ramp once you get him out, but without things like Rip Hunter's chalkboard, it's a little bit trickier to buy him early. We still have some of the ramp globals and there's other ways to ramp up to him, but at that point, maybe you don't need another source of ramp in dark side. It's hard to say if he's gonna be super impactful, but uh, he's still got that pretty decent ability. And he's a uh, scary, might be interesting to see what we can do with him. Scary prospect. He's a scary oh, prospect yeah. and a bit of a shriek magnet. You know, he might, uh, because you just don't want to see your opponent ramping through their bag every turn. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so they might end up shrieking him instead of your actual Winkle. Yeah. Um, there's something to be said about when you got to play him and you just got to roll so many dice all the time uh, when you got him working. And that was just kind of pretty fun to have happen anyway. No, I wouldn't know. I've never had it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, next up is, well, Dove. I don't know if Dove on her own is, is much cop. I feel a bit sorry for the Teen Titans because they've, they've lost a lot in rotation. Yeah. Or, or rather, they will lose a lot in June. Um, I've seen Yeshko play something with a, with a two cost. If Dove is in your used pile and you take damage, move Dove to your prep area. Could be quite handy, except that he was playing her with uh, the Kal-El Global, which we're losing in World's Finals. She's got mm -hmm. a great defensive stat line, and if you can flip that, and the, the super rare also, even more so, I think. Um, but without any way to do that in new modern, what are we calling it? Very modern, then not so useful. But together with, is it the Uncommon Hawk? Mm -hmm. While Hawk is active, if Dove is KO deal damage equal to Hawk's attack to your opponent. Um, 
I've never successfully managed to use this, but it seems like it could be a quite strong way of do doing some direct damage. He's got an attack line of two, five, and seven, so on his top face, that's uh, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Um, yeah. I've seen people try to use it. I've never seen it used very effectively, but maybe the meta has slowed down. Maybe we hope that it's slowed down enough to maybe make some of these things possible. Yeah. Yeah, it is tougher to flip her defense and attack stats, but there are still things like Malekith Global and Fabricate that you can use to KO, maybe even multiple dubs in a turn, and uh, that could be a, a pretty substantial amount of damage there. Um, all right, so next up, we're talking about the common Firefly. Uh, when fielded, deal one damage to your opponent for each Bolt character die you control. Um, there are definitely cards that do a very similar thing. Uh, Nobby, for example, the Super Norman Osborn, uh, the Super Boom Boom from the X-Men set does something kind of similar. Um, but if you don't happen to get your hands on <laughs> some pretty popular Super Rares that come out recently, um, this card could do in a pinch. Um, the fact that it only works on Bolts doesn't always matter so much because it's pretty easy to make a, a fairly decent control bolt team these days with um shriek, shriek and scarlet witch yeah. and we're going to lose a couple of pieces but um, you can still make a, a decent bolt team um fielding costs are a little bit worse uh, although not substantially worse than boom boom um i think norman osborne's got a little bit better fielding overall he's, yeah he's warm, um, but yeah but uh can we talk uh -huh. to get to um this was always great in a draft for direct damage um and you know for a three cost uh that can be collected in um not a bad uh, ability there i was so. st staring at this card the other day and i know i've said before that modok is my favorite and most pretty dice but i actually think that the the color scheme i don't know i find it hypnotic st staring yeah, at yeah, that that's stuff. yellow not, orange swirl yeah it's not the best art in the world but it's really pretty i like i like it <laughs> anyway. uh, i always find with this swirl dice i do a lot more of like picking through my extras to find the ones that i like the most <laughs> Um, okay, let's uh, let's move on to Harley Quinn. Um, she's a nice three cost villain. We talked that there might be quite prevalent, uh, quite a high number of villains in the new meta. And when Harley Quinn is active at the beginning of your turn, if you control at least two different villains, villain character dice, which obviously includes her, um, your opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So again, this is life loss, and so it's a it's a two life swing each turn that she's in the field with another villain, and she only costs three, and she's got decent fielding, and that's pretty good, I reckon. That's a mm -hmm. that's a nice add to a villain team. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll move on to the rare hot girl. Um, while Hawk Girl is active, whenever a non-villain character die attacks, you may spin that die up one level. Um, I found this to be really cool with the Awaken keyword from the X-Men First Class set. Um, you just get your Awaken characters out, which are all villains. I don't think there's a single villain with Awaken. I feel like I'm going to be proven wrong in the comments. Um, <laughs> The, but then you you don't have to pay any energy or do anything special. Um, and as long as you can keep them low, maybe you might have to have a, a spin down global, uh, but then you just attack with them and you get to trigger their awaken ability. Um, so things like the common Jubilee, you can attack with her and then deal one damage to your whole opponent's whole board. And that way you get that free activation on that. Um, also just in general, being able to spin your characters up. Uh, don't forget that dragons don't count as villains. And so, with your dragon team, maybe you can attack with them, activate breath weapon, and then they get to spin up a level. And so um, that I think uh, is a pretty decent ability. Uh, she's the most expensive of the hot girls, but her building costs are still pretty small. Um, she'll also help herself spin up to a four, four side, which is um, pretty decent. Um, and uh, yeah, I like that card. I'm gonna say quite how many times you mentioned dragons in this, this, in this chat. Um, <laughs> I was listening to the double burst yesterday, so um, you got dragons on the brain. We've missed one from our list. Uh, oh, we did, yeah. Hush, um, uncommon Hush. Uh, while Hush is active, if a bat character is in the field zone, KO Hush and add a die from your bag to your prep area. We've lost a lot of good bat characters, but we've mentioned a couple already, uh, bat girl and bat woman. Um, and Hush Ramp, I quite like. Uh, Stephen was saying he wasn't so keen on it in his video, and I, I take his point entirely. But he's, he, oh, if if you can, if you if you need a team which requires knockouts, uh, he provides both knockouts and ramp at the same time, which is great. Um, we did a video where I did a team with Avalanche. I think it's Rare Avalanche, Avalanche from XFC, uh, who deals one damage to your opponent's field for every time one of your villains is. Is it fielded or knocked out? I can't remember, but it's great. Uh, fielded. Yeah, I remember. Fielded. Um, so Hush is, Hush is nice. Hush is he's a two cost. Uh, he's got decent fielding. He's only one on his top side. And you, if you do spin him up or you get him on his top side, you can use him to attack as well. So mm -hmm. quite useful. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, all right, right next to Hush is Jervis Tetch. Um, we actually were having kind of a tough time deciding which one. Um, probably not the common, which is too bad because it's the cheap one. Oh, I like um, the common, so right. But um, being able to take control of target opposing sidekick um, that has to attack this turn. Uh, I mean, you know, there are some decent allies. We mentioned Uncommon Bat Hound. Um, you could uh, take control of your opponent's five attack bat hound and attack with it. That's pretty decent for a two cost. With, if you uh, total field the cost of one. If you just need to broaden your field for for a team up team, he's quite handy. He's obviously. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, but the other ones, um, the uncommon. Um, if your opponent declares attackers, you get to take control of one of their dice and um, and then block with it. So. Um, I, I assume that means one of the attacking die could become one of the blockers instead. So that's a two die swing right there, and they don't get to attack with that die. Uh, and then with the rare, um, you I think you could. You, sorry, you could take control of any of their guys, even one that they didn't. Attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then with the rare, you gain control of one of their dice and attack with it. So you use their red hood against them or something. Um, you know, a little bit specific. You have to have them in the field, and and I mean, the fielding cost is is great, but for the stat for the purchase cost, the stats are pretty terrible. Um, but that's because he's sort of relying on other your opponent's dice to do anything meaningful. It's also a little uh, bit. Still, um, sorry, uh, it's just a little bit weirdly oops. written. Um, when he attacks, uh, makes it sound like he's going to attack, and the character, the die that you take control of, is also going to attack, which is a bit counter to what it says in the rule. But but maybe they could clear that up. Yeah. Sorry, it seems like from the uncommon text, though, if he's blocking and the other character is blocking, that it probably would work that way on the rare. Still, might need a ruling on it. Uh, could be interesting, a fun little tech piece, but uh, possibly pretty useful. Right, what was next? Uh, where we? So, where we Mr. Miracle? I don't know. Is he a thing anymore, rare Mr. Miracle? <laughs> um, I I don't know. I thought you know we, I don't think Mr. Miracle ever found a great use in the the previous meta, and we did lose some of the great action dice. Um, but we still have things like um, Magic Missile. Um, but doesn't, and, doesn't uh, Malekith do a better job of what Mr. Miracle's trying to do? Because Boomerang is fifty fifty, whereas Malekith the super rare Malekith. Yeah, I guess we're trading one super rare for another. Um, yeah, probably Malekith is going to outshine Mr. Miracle. Um, but you know, maybe someone will find an interesting way to to mm -hmm. to try and use the uh, some action dice. Um, I also think Scarlet Witch uh, did quite a number on a lot of the action dice yeah. heavy teams, um, for better or for worse. So uh, possibly not Mr. Miracle. Speaking of super rares, we've got. Uh, Owlman, super rare Owlman. Um, while Owlman is active, your villain character dies get plus one attack and one defense. When Owlman attacks, they get your villain character dies get another uh, one attack and one defense. So if you're building a wide field with something like Team Up, um, or you've got uh, you're playing Villainous Pack, for example, where you play the die and your opponent has to select one was it one non-villain to block with. So if they don't have any villains to block with, you might have. Uh, uh, a, a large excess of attackers and if they're both getting plus two if they're all getting plus two plus two if they're villains and we've got ways of making villains with the, the rare danger room and malekith is it uncommon um that could be pretty nasty i reckon yeah yeah uncommon malekith giving all your sidekicks plus one plus one and villain and then element giving them an extra two means you've got four four sidekicks in the field pretty easily that's gross you don't even need team up at that point oh that's nice yeah okay yeah um parademon um i tried to make the uncommon parademon work in the very first virtual tournament um and swarm is still a thing um a lot of good swarm characters are left we did lose a couple from Farron under siege but and mr miracle sadly um but probably not going to be a huge thing but the rare parademon um we were having discussion on the Discord the other day about the Tabaxi Rogue and how the common is a good way of penalizing your opponent for drawing dice. Well, this is the same kind of thing. You've got uh, when a player draws one or more dice, deal one damage to that player. The nice thing about the Parademon over Tabaxi Rogue is that um, they definitely take at least one damage every turn when they draw. Now, of course, it is double-sided, and you will take damage as well. Um, I've seen interesting combos where the rare Parademon was paired up with the rare Harley Quinn. Uh -huh. So during your turn, you would make your opponent lose a life, and you would gain a life, which would offset the damage you were taking from Parademon. But then on their turn, they would take a damage from Parademon. So they had this kind of two-damage clock they were on, in addition to anything that you were doing to them uh, as well. Um, Four cost for the stats is a little bit um, much, but um, you know if you're talking about trying to punish ramp, um, this one gets them from the very first time they draw on their turn, and then if they're going to use anything like investigation or uh, spot or mimic, then they're going to take some more damage as well. Yep. 
Um, okay, moving on to Red Hood. Common, Jason Todd. When Red Hood attacks, he gets plus one attack for each other attacking character die. A sort of new Guy Gardner. Um, he costs a little bit more, and he's a mask rather than a fist. Um, his fielding is a bit worse. On the other hand, he doesn't have to attack every turn, and he's already got fairly decent stats of his own. He's got a 2 3 5 in attack and a 2 3 5 in defense. Um, so if you've got some way of getting him through, either unblockable shenanigans or overcrush or a wide field, he could be a bit brutal, I reckon. Uh, I just, it just occurred to me that one of the upgrades from the Iron Man War Machine set would could make a uh, level one mass character unblockable. Mm. Um, that might be true. a pretty good target for it. I mean, he's only a 2-2 two, two at level one, but then, of course, that's not the point. He gets the plus one for every other attack. Character. If you can guarantee he's a level one. I always find those conditional things pretty tricky to... Yeah. Then of all the upgrades, that's the only one that requires a specific level. But uh, as a mask, that might actually help him out quite a bit. Yep. Uh, anyway. Um, and then I think the last one we're going to mention from the sets is the Uncommon Rip Hunter. Uh, the Common Rip Hunter was kind of interesting. It, it was kind of the same ability as the Common Cosmic Cube, uh, where you get to sort of send dice to uh, your use pile and draw a new die for each of them. Oh, yeah. um, kind of nice if you needed to guarantee something and used. And then because they ruled that you could use it for Swarm, it was you could like do multiple rounds of swarm in one turn and just draw tons and tons of dice uh, nice bit, uh, yeah. but the uncommon um is going to be i think and james uh, i think uh, we've talked about this a bunch uh one of the sort of go-to pieces um if you need to do actions uh it used to be that if your opponent had scarlet witch out you had to kind of bring something to mitigate that and i think the most popular choice um looking at the results from wkos and some of our videos uh was parallax because outside of the roll and reroll, you could re-roll those action dice but it still took a couple of energy and um it was kind of tough to guarantee it um that's gone now a lot of the other ways of doing that are gone but the uncommon rip hunter it says when fielded name a non-sidekick die while rip hunter is active when you draw the name die you play Place it in your reserve pool on any face instead of rolling it. So it gets around Scarlet Witch because you're just not going to roll it. You're just going to take that team up dice and you're just going to put it right in the field on a, an action. Face. That is a, ma a magical feeling, honestly. Uh, speaking of, <laughs> speaking as a person who can't roll for Toffee, uh, just take, <laughs> taking things out of your bag, cosmic cubes out of your bag, and placing them in your reserve pool on the face that you want is a, yeah. is a special feeling. Um, and he's got decent stats as well. He's got good defensive stats. I would like to see whether he makes a mark because he costs four, and that's sort of a test of whether the meta has slowed down sufficiently yeah, to, allow, to yeah. allow for these things. Maybe, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Maybe people will go for the... Uh, how the hell do you say? Acera Rack? Acera Rack oh, from yeah. uh, whatever his name that is. That one with only once a turn, it seems tough. But Quite limited, but maybe I mean, that's that's all some people need to, to roll yeah. the action die they need. I mean, the other thing I like about Rip Hunter is it says you may put it on any face. So, you know, maybe one turn you need that action to come up as energy because you need to buy something that turn. But then the next turn that you draw it, you can put it on its double burst face. You could guarantee yeah. that as well. He is, a, um, he is a when fielded, though. So he's nerfed by the same, like, by Madame Matthews. Yep, yeah, nerfed by things like that. Um, you also would be kind of tough to get him out of the field if you needed to change targets with him. But, I, you know, it's also expensive enough. You wouldn't want to buy a second one. But if there's that one piece, like, team up or uh something that you need to to trigger you know every time it comes up um i think that's going to be kind of interesting to see if that works or not yeah it could be useful all right brilliant yep uh so, yeah there are quite a few uh, after this in the alphabet but um we're gonna ignore we look through them <laughs> uh the white lanterns from this set uh usually good for kind of combo wombo teams but i don't know if any of those are going to be super impactful but yeah that's the the batman set so uh, thank you very much for listening and listening next time. I think we're going to do what we're going to do, team, team packs. and maybe the team packs all, all together, all together yeah. yeah. Um, and then we'll go through all the, the remaining sets one by one. I hope it's been useful in some way. If you disagree with anything that we say, um, that's fine. <laughs> please, please, please <laughs> make a comment and tell us about it. And if, yeah, we, yeah. if we've missed anything, let us know. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll take, see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.